Hello and welcome to Analog Insights. In today's episode, Jules and I tackle one of the most requested topics, and that is scanning. We look at how difficult it can be to find a scanner that completely matches and fits your needs, and we take our own journey as examples for that, because Jules and I really represent different ends of the spectrum. Jules has a professional background in printing, especially pre-press, and because of that, early on in his career, um, got to use really professional scale um, scanners. And when it came down to finding his own scanners, he of course um, looked in directions that are unlike most um, film shooters. Um, I, on the other hand, had um, very limited knowledge of scanners and was just looking for something light and small that I can easily put away again and also something um, that is kind of um, up to date when it comes to interfaces and operating systems so that they don't need to use any kind of emulation or virtual machine or similar. In the course of this video, we will therefore touch at three different major categories of scanners. Um, and we will have one representative per category and take a closer look at it. And at the end, we will compare the sharpness and quality of the unedited results of these scanners, but also the speed and overall handling. We selected rather random holiday pictures and portraits because these best represent our typical use cases and we wanted to keep it as realistic as possible. Please also know that the technical aspects are not the primary focus here and um, that we will only cover scanners with which we actually worked um, in the course of our journey or still work. Of course, there are a lot of other scanner um, videos out there and for instance, Nick Carver did a great job of comparing different um, scanning techniques and how they affect the final print that you could have put on the wall. And there are also other scanning um, technique videos featuring um, DSLRs or other digital cameras to scan your negatives that will be not in focus here. So um, this video is really about very different um, requirements that you can have with respect to your scanners and then the different major categories that you could look at. And ideally it offers a shortcut for your own personal journey and um, because in our case it took years to find the perfect scanner and maybe this is just a shortcut and you can um, it makes it easier for you to select which scanner category you want to look at and then also which scanner might be potentially interesting to you. So let's get started. Before we start, it is important to mention that working in the so-called hybrid process, so shooting on film in the analog way and then um, scanning your negatives and digitizing them and um, manipulating them in a digital way um, um, is not a recent development at all, but was quite common in the publishing and graphic design industries so also for Hollywood cinema. But looking at a consumer, the typical consumer, it was largely irrelevant for um, several decades because most people just shot on film and then had a print um, of a color negative um, film or a black and white film that they received from the lab or they were shooting on slide film and then used a projector to look at these images. And it is really interesting to look at that small, that short period of time where um, there was an increasing need to digitize your negatives um, because um, of the availability of PCs at home. Um, it was more common to have such uh, something like that at home and to have that urge to scan your negatives and then work on them digitally. But uh, more or less at the same time, we saw the dawn of digital photography and it became increasingly more convenient to shoot photos directly digitally and then manipulate them instead of scanning your negatives. I'm obviously simplifying here, but what is important for us is here that there was a relatively short time span if we look at the entire film era and also at the era of digital photography where we saw an overlap and the creation of the kind of scanners that we will look at in our three categories here. So a relatively short time span that created incredibly interesting scanners that are until today considered by many benchmarks and heavily sought after. 
So this brings us to our first um, of the three categories that we want to touch on. And the first one is consumer scanners. Such scanners were typically flatbed scanners, um, which supported not just scanning documents, but also your printed photos and in some cases negatives or slides. And when I grew up, it became more common to have such a scanner at home to be able to occasionally scan a document or also your to digitize your printed photo and then work a little bit in early versions of, of Photoshop and, and similar graphic design programs at home to create a band cover or whatever you did with these images. And um, only towards the dawn of digital photography was an increase of specialized negative uh, scanners, this is what I briefly touched on, that made it really convenient and easy to um, get great results off your negatives and not just something that was already printed and, and ready and um, also was convenient to use. And for our test here in the first category, we look at one of the late stage scanners that is not a flatbed scanner. Um, but a desktop scanner, um, and that is the Epson F3200. And um, that was typically made for consumers and um, prices in that uh, range, in that um, category, typically range between 300 to 1000 euros. The next category we want to look at are so-called lab scanners, um, such as the Fuji Frontier, Pacon or Norizo scanners. These are optimized for scanning large amounts of negatives quickly and in a reliable and consistent, um, good consistently good fashion. And the scanners were popular in the late 1990s and early 2000s and are still in operation in modern film labs today. So if you have uh, a film lab like Carmen Cedar Labs, a uh, lab in, 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 uh, in Spain, they are operating um, Fuji Frontier and Norizo scanners even today. And um, these are heavily sought after today. So there is also quite some competition um, on the used market. And in this category, the prices typically range between um, 2,000 and 5,000 euros. And for our test and our review here, we um, take the Fuji Frontier SP3000 as an um, example. The last category that we want to look at are professional high-end scanners. Um, such as the Heidelberg Neck Scan or um, drum scanners. These scanners create incredibly sharp and detailed scans, but are also relatively slow and um, not ideal for large scale reparations due to the handling. So it always takes a little while to get all the negatives set up and get your scans ready. And then it is slowly scanning all these um, negatives and you get great results, but it really takes a lot of time. Prices in this category range from 3,000 to 10,000 um, euros or more. And for our test, we look at the Heidelberg Next Scan 4100. One final note um, before you jump at us already. Um, what we also increasingly see is, of course, people scanning using a digital camera, so either a mirrorless or a DSLR, um, often in combination with a macro lens. And depending on your lens and camera setup um, and cam camera sensor, this setup is really um, great and really interesting and can create incredibly good results that are certainly on par with our lab scanner category. Um, and we also explore this do-it-yourself technique um, and um, for instance, in our Nikon F5 review, we have a, a lot of images scanned um, with the Sony Alpha 7 and macro lens um, combination. And we really like the results and they are great for especially slide film in our tests. Um, but if you're like Jules and um, suffer from um, dyschromatopsia, so a weakness to distinguish between red and green colors, um, it can be a nightmare to scan color negative film with such a setup because you always get a certain color tint or you need to do something in post-processing even when using tools like Negative Lab Pro. It was incredibly difficult for him to get consistently good results and this is also um, one of the reasons uh, in combination with the still do-it-yourself um, setup and that we as really analog photographers don't invest our money in, in digital cameras so much. So we typically don't have latest models with a lot of megapixels at home, but rather invest in a Hasselblad or something um, of, of a film camera. And um, as a result of that, we kind of excluded this method, despite the fact that it's really promising and interesting um, 
So nobody should feel offended. It's just something that happened on our journey, but that we deliberately excluded for this review here. So after this huge disclaimer, let's dive into our three categories. So now let's look at our requirements. As mentioned in the introduction, Jules and I represent different ends of the spectrum here. And it might be interesting for you to look at these very different requirements and see in which direction you are drawn um, to maybe then also know what, what, which of the categories that we will discuss um, fits best to your needs. Jules um, wants to be able to scan 35 millimeter um, medium format up to um, 6 by 12, so the panoramic format and all the way up to 4 by 5 inch um, large format negatives. He also wants to be able to potentially create high resolution, high quality scans, hence he has the Heidelberg Next Scan, but also wanted to be able to um, create really consistently good um, scans in a really fast fashion, especially of 35 millimeter film. And uh, hence he settled on the Fuji Frontier and also has that at home. Um, he was looking for systems that um, can be set up and installed in a fixed fashion and then just run reliably. And the size and the weight um, only played a secondary role for him. Um, Jules interestingly creates his scans rather as an, as an archive or digital contact sheet and then decides based on the scans which of the negatives are the most interesting ones and he wants to take over to his enlarger to then create an actual print of them. So these are his requirements and most importantly as a person with um, dyschromatopsia he needs a reliant system for scanning color negative film um, that as it is for him really hard to see any kind of uh, color tint um, and for that reason, he also settled on the Fuji Frontier because it just, um, in combination with um, the setup and the software, creates reliably good um, results. And once you've figured out your profiles, um, you just get really nice colors um, of color ne negative negatives. Um, I, on the other hand, looked for something really small and light that can be instantly put away again, um, because as you probably know, I, uh, I like to, I like it neat and not have some, some kind of fixed setup of my scanner. I just wanted to, want to be able to put it away again. I also wanted a scanner that supports all the um, formats that I'm shooting, so not have different scanners for different formats. So it's something that kind of works with 35 millimeter, with every um, possible medium format format and um, all the way up to 4 by 5 inch. And um, in addition, of course, it should also work with um, slide film, black and white film and color negative film and create solid results here. And last but not least, it should be relatively fast and easy to handle, so somewhat foolproof and ideally cost below 500 euros. And as you can already guess, it took me quite some time finding that scanner. So for several years, I was just sending off my, my negatives to a lab because I preferred them scanning them um, with a, a lab scanner instead of having a consumer scanner at home that does not live up to my expectations. And then Jules was actually the one finding it and uh, he pointed me in the direction of the Epson um, F3200 um, which we will look at in a minute. So let's start with the most interesting category and that is the professional pre-press scanners. Um, as you might know, drum scanners are um, considered the creme de la creme, so the best solution that is out there, but they are also very slow in their handling and um, incredibly expensive. And because of that, um, the most popular solution are so-called professional flatbed scanners that are used by photo agencies and archives, for instance, to um, scan uh, texts 
um, negatives, um, but even three-dimensional objects like coins or um, watches, um, as long as they're not too, too high. All that is being typically done with such professional scale flatbed scanners. Um, for our test, we look at the Heidelberg Next Scan F4100 um, and similar scanners would be the Creo Skytex Eversmart, the um, Screen Cezanne or the Fuji Lenovo series. Please note that these scanners can usually not be used out of the box, so you shouldn't just go out there and buy one. <laughs> what they need is typically um, an old Windows version or an old um, G3 or G4 um, Mac and come with um, SDSI or Firewire interfaces. So it's always a little bit tricky to get them adapted. Um, Jules runs the scanner with a dedicated small PC that is um, hidden in the cupboard and with Windows XP and he uses a remote desktop um, to access it when needed. The official software is usually very good as is of course professional scale software. Um, but uh, it is also a little bit tricky to learn. Um, but software like Silverfast is also available, um, for instance, for the Heidelberg Next Scan. But unfortunately, it comes in at a hefty price tag. In this case, it would cost um, 2,000 euros for the license alone. Sometimes you get luckier um, depending on the scanner that you're aiming for. Um, most importantly, please note that the transport and setup of these scanners is not trivial. Um, such scanners often have so-called transport safety devices um, which need to be installed correctly to prevent the um, carefully calibrated moving parts inside the scanner from floating around while transport. Um, for the United States and Europe, we can also highly recommend to reach out to Carl Hudson um, as your go-to guy for such scanners. He's a former employee of Hell, then um, Linotype Hell, and then Heidelberg, uh, so the three different company, companies. Um, and he was a key player in um, their pre-press um, service department um, for 20 years before starting his own operation. And he helped Jules repeatedly with his expertise in the course of this whole process of finding the right scanner and setting it up and we can highly encourage you to reach out to him if you're interested in that category and need some help with the setup or the software or whatever you need. Um, for more you can just find the link in the description below. Once set up the scanner um, really works perfectly and reliably and um, can you can be used for a variety of purposes as mentioned before also for instance if you want to scan larger formats so everything beyond 4 by 5 inch so 8 by 10 for instance this is an ideal setup for it the Heidelberg next skin f4100 weighs um, 90 kilograms and originally cost um, around um, 50,000 euros um, today um, they can be had for one to three thousand euros um, and in contrast to the normal flatbed scanners, and this is really the unique selling proposition here, the lens of the Heidelberg Next Scan can freely move around the entire scan area and does without a mirror projecting the image, which is common in a typical small um, flatbed scanner. So this means that the scanner ensures that only the center of the lens, so the best performance part of the lens, is used for scanning the object and this is done line by line. And um, because of that it consistently creates good results across the entire um, scan area that you have available, which is 457 by 315 millimeters, which would translate to 18 by 12.4 inches. So um, and that can be completely filled with negatives and you get consistently good results because um, basically the lens is moving um, underneath the negatives and ensuring with a line by line scanning that you get great results here. The scanner comes with autofocus, um, which significantly contributes to these excellent results and also makes it possible to, diff to use different film holders because it simply um, looks at where is the negative, so the object that I need to scan and disregards um, the film holder next to it. So you can, could ideally, you could potentially put just existing film holders that you have into that um, scan area, or as in the case of Jules, create your own setup um, that is then consistent with the settings you have in your software. Wet mounting also works um, really nice, as you can see here, and the maximum optical resolution is um, 
5080 dpi which uh, translates to um, for, um, 35 megapixels um, for um, 35 millimeter film so basically uh, 7200 by 4800 pixels um, 135 megapixel for um, a 6x6 medium format negative um, and that again would translate to 11,600 um, by 11,600 pixels um, resolution and uh, really a mind-blowing 518 and 16 megapixels so 516 megapixels for a 4x5 inch um, negative and that of course would be 20,320 um, pixels by um, 25,400 pixels. The output is um, um, 48 bit and um, the color calibration is possible and to make the colors 100% correct, you can even create ICC profiles and calibrate the scanner, which of course makes sense for such a professional scale scanner. Here are some of the results um, that we created with it. In the category lab scanners, we are looking at the Fujifilm Frontier SB3000. This scanner weighs um, 118 kilograms and costs 4,000 euros. Originally, this workstation was part of a so-called mini lab and had a so-called wet lab attached to it. The scanner comes with different carriers for 35 millimeter and medium format um, film. And these carriers um, are incredibly hard to get as standalones and are often very expensive. So it is advisable to look for a complete set if you are in the market for such a scanner to avoid um, trouble down the road. The Frontier can scan entire rolls and automatically recognizes the individual frames um, and lets you quickly fine tune each individual photo using the keyboard that is built into the workstation here. And this workflow really is a blast with a Frontier. Um, 35 millimeter negatives can be scanned um, with up to um, 5,444 by 3,649 pixels, so 20 megapixels. And as an icing on the cake, you uh, get um, automatic dust and scratch removal for color negative um, film and slide film. The only downside is that in the case of slide film, um, the density of the film um, um, results in the frames not being always correctly um, identified by the scanner and it is therefore advisable not to scan entire rolls but only snippets of six um, frames at a time like then you typically it recognizes the frames correctly and you don't um, encounter any trouble um, here um, furthermore scanning medium format um, is a slight compromise um, as the same sensor size is being used as for 35 millimeter um, film. So if you have a 6 by 4.5 negative, for instance, um, you would only, the scanner would only use the portion of the full sensor um, that covers the width of the negative. So scanning, um, and that is a little bit unfortunate. And in addition, um, scanning 6 by 12 panoramic medium format or even 4 by 5 inch is simply not possible with this scanner. Here are some examples.
Our last category is the most common one, consumer scanners. Um, so typically small desktop scanners or flatbed scanners. The category would be best represented by a Epson V800, for instance, which uh, Jules and I have tried um, before and used before. But um, for this test, we had settled on the Epson F3200, which I'm currently using and that fulfills all the requirements that I've mentioned in the introduction. Um, it is light, small, quiet and comes with film holders for all common formats, which I wanted. Um, the scanner can be used via USB and um, VUScan, the software is running on the latest macOS version. Um, it creates both JPEGs and TIFFs um, simultaneously and I can um, usually use the out of scanner results um, for here our YouTube videos, um, for Instagram or whatever my purpose is. Um, in, in some cases, I need to remove a little bit of, of dust as I don't have an automatic dust and scratch removal like is the case with the Frontier. And the scanner also supports ICC profiles to calibrate the color if I want to. Here are some results to give you a better um, idea of the um, quality and sharpness that you can get with the scanner. Um, according to the manufacturer, it scans with 3200 um, DPI, which is very common for this category. And this would translate to 14 megapixels for a um, 35 millimeter um, film, um, 54 megapixels for medium format. So um, a six by six negative would be um, 7,307 pixels by um, 7,307 pixels. And a really impressive 200 megapixels for four by five inch negatives. And we also scan some, some here to give you an impression. Um, and you could do that up to 12,800 by um, 1600 pixels. Um, this is kind of the manufacturing, manufacturer data. And for these kind of standards, it's typically um, more realistic that they work with a DPI of um, 1,800 to 2,200. And even that would still be really, really good. Um, but it's basically one thing is the manufacturing data and the other is what is really the sweet spot of the scanner and what works best. And at which point um, do you not get many more quality out of it, but more pixels. Um, yeah, so here are some results of this scanner. So now it's time to compare the results of the three different scanners and rate them um, on a scale between one to 10 with 10 being the best performance. Please note that the results are directly taken out of the scanner and are not adjusted with respect to contrast or um, sharpness. So this is really the, the result that you get out of the scanner with all its ups and downs um, that come with it. Um, we look at three different categories, so the sharpness and quality, the color and the speed and handling. In the first category for sharpness and quality, um, the Heidelberg um, really performs best. Um, we give it a rating of 10 out of 10 um, because it is always in focus, um, or the negatives are always in focus. You get a really high resolution and the freely movable lens. Um, ensures that it only uses the center of the lens and you get maximum um, sharpness here and it captures it all line by line. So really great results here when it comes to sharpness. Um, the Frontier is a close um, um, second place here with nine out of 10 when we look um, at the 35 millimeter um, due to the plain negative placement and the solid focus. And a seven out of 10 we would say for a medium format because of the mentioned um, problem with six by 4.5 and six by six negatives due to the limited sensor size that is just optimized for 35 millimeter film. Um, when we look at the Epson, we would still give it a 7 out of 10 when it comes to sharpness and quality um, because of the relatively high resolution, um, the plain negative placement and the line by line scanning that this kind of setup comes with. It is not sharp, the perfect sharpness at closer inspection as you can see here, but it's still a really solid and nice result.
Looking at color, um, it, here we have a, a slightly different um, um, result. Um, the Heidelberg scores with 9 out of 10 our pers from our perspective. The native um, software New Color is really good and offers a large variety of options, yet it requires some getting used to as it is made um, for professional commercial applications. Um, so it's a little bit tricky and, and um, nevertheless it can create great results. The Frontier stands out when you look at color and gets our 10 out of 10 points um, for a color negative film due to the beautiful out of the box color matching that you get. And a 9 out of 10 for slide film, here the results are also really, really nice. The Epson again gets a 7 out of 10. Um, it's a generally good but sometimes a bit fiddly for negatives um, that are shot in slightly changing light situations, which is often the case in portrait sessions where you move from one spot to another. And then to get consistent color across the entire series can be a little bit tricky with my Epson scanner. Um, here the, con the Frontier is much more convenient because it's much easier, thanks to the keyboard um, adjustments, to get that right and to adjust for these kind of um, shifting light situations. With respect to speed and handling, um, here we also have a very um, different result again. Here the Heidelberg um, is kind of falling off a little bit with 6 out of 10 points. Um, because of the lengthy setup process and um, the slow but perfect scans that you get, um, there is still some post-processing um, needed because you don't have any automatic dust removal. The Frontier again stands out with 10 out of 10 points for color negative and black and white film due to incredibly fast automatic film transport and the frame recognition as well as the easy to use fine tuning that we mentioned before. It gets a 9 out of 10 for slide film due to the occasional problems um, of recognizing the correct frames that we've mentioned briefly and for color scans the automatic dust removal um, speeds things up significantly. Um, it gets a 5 out of 10 for um, 120 films or medium format um, because these need to be scanned really frame by frame and you don't get a lot of um, advantage here. There is an auto carrier available for 120 film but it's impossible to get this one. So there's almost um, yeah, no post-processing needed. That is a plus um, for the entire frontier here. The Epson, again, we kind of settled on 7 out of 10 um, for a relatively quick scanning and um, only three um, breaks, um, or setup breaks per roll. That is pretty um, common for these kind of um, desktop scanners. And in my case, it's really, um, I, I typically combine it with, with ironing shirts, for instance, um, that I just um, make my setup, go back to my ironing board, um, iron, um, and after um, 12 images for 35 millimeter or six images for um, a, a couple of images for medium format. Um, I go back to it, do another setup and then um, have it run again and I continue ironing um, for the next and wait for the next batch um, to be finished. So this is our summary here. Um, you can see the, the Epson is performing pretty well um, for just being that um, kind of desktop scanner. The Frontier stands out when it comes to um, color treatment and 35 millimeter um, scanning in a consistently and fast um, fashion. Um, so if this is your focus, 35 millimeter um, is also interesting to look at such a scanner. And the Heidelberg stands out when it really is not about speed. Um, um, but about high quality scans and getting completely in focus, beautiful scans without any kind of compromise. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this very special episode of Analog Insights and our comparison of three different scanner categories with one representative per category. Most importantly, we hope this video was useful to you in your own journey to finding your perfect scanner that fits your requirements and your needs. And maybe it was helpful to see our very different requirements and how we then uh, applied it to the scanners that we are actually using on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Um, most importantly, we wanted to mention that um, we hope that we don't encourage you to just go out and purchase a certain scanner now because this is not what the um, video is about. And Jules also cautioned me against a certain phenomenon that he often found in himself that when looking at other people's scans, it always felt like their scans are better and it must be because of the scanner that they're using. And, um, and sometimes it just helps to let it settle a little bit and wait um, before making such a decision. And also, I think, come primarily from your requirements that help you end up at maybe the current scan setup that you have or that should really guide you in your choice of a scanner and not so much what are the results because of course it's always possible to get better results but it's also important to consider the way it takes you to get there in terms of handling setup um, and all that maybe installing additional computers just to get a certain result so it's not just about the results, so it's, but it's also about the workflow that you want to have and that you choose to have for you, for yourself. And this is what we primarily wanted to talk about and um, pay attention to with this video. So we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. So thanks for watching. We hope to see you soon. Bye.